What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff and today I'm checking out something that I've wanted for a long time and that's Lightroom Sliders for Final Cut. It's a plugin that's designed by Eric Lenz and I'm gonna see what it's like. I want to find out what you actually get and how similar they are to the real thing, how they work and then whether they're any good. It's time for me to shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video are popped in the description box below, and with this one, I've been able to get you a 10% off discount code, details below. Be sure to show some love for the channel, as always, this isn't sponsored content, so your support means a lot to me. If you could hit the notification bell next to your sub button, it really just means a lot to me, plus you won't miss a video. Let's get on with it. Full disclosure, Eric, the producer of this plugin, did send me this plugin for free, but as always, I told him if it's a pile of, well, you know what, the public will know about it. It's always gonna be a balanced review and it's always gonna have pros and cons. So just so you know, I got it for free. The joke's kind of on him though, because I definitely would have bought this as it's something I've wanted Final Cut to have for a long time. So as the title of the plugin suggests, you get basically the same set of sliders that you get from Lightroom. The sliders are split between three plugins. You've got one for the standard exposure and color adjustment sliders, one for hue, saturation and luminance, and one for camera correction. And with more and more people out there becoming hybrid shooters, so photos and video, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of people that are very comfortable with Adobe Lightroom but then thrust into the process of color grading video, they might feel a little bit out of their depth. Until now. Back in October of 2018, I made a video on this channel called Final Cut Pro Wishlist of Features, and this was one of them, and in particular, I was looking for something that approximated the clarity slider look. So when talking to Eric, the creator of this plugin, excitedly, the very first question I wanted to know was, were you able to replicate the clarity slider? And the answer was, unfortunately not. And that's because the clarity slider is doing lots of things and apparently is ludicrously complex to replicate. You also don't get the texture and dehaze sliders from, from Lightroom but that's understandable as well. They're also doing very complex things. But just a note on that, these sliders, the clarity, texture, and dehaze sliders, they're really designed for having an effect on raw, very high bitrate stills. And honestly, if you were to apply them to video footage, there's no telling what the result would be. I suspect it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> okay, pause. This is an 11th hour addition to this video. I have spoken to Eric since, and he said he's trying his very hardest to get this added to future versions of this software. So that's really exciting. I can't wait to see what it looks like. On with the video. Let me show you how these work. So I'm in Final Cut now, and I'm just gonna give you a little tour. I've added an instance of all three of these plugins into my clip, and we'll start with the basic controls. So we've got temperature, which works really nicely. We also have tint, as you'd expect. The exposure slider works, I think, really nicely. It tends to adjust your exposure in a really good way. I love having a dedicated contrast slider. It's just so useful. The highlight and shadow sliders also work in a really pleasing way. We can also adjust our whites and blacks. And whilst they work well, for this kind of thing, I would actually suggest using color curves rather than adjusting them within this plugin. And then of course we have vibrance and saturation. I don't know about you, but I tend to prefer the look of vibrance. Next we have the camera calibration segment, and this is one you need to be very gentle with. I'll explain why that is, but firstly we have the really nice slider, which is the shadow tint slider. I really like what this does to your footage. I would advise subtlety with every single slider. And then finally we have the HSL sliders, of which I really like the hue and saturation portions of these, but the luminance one, you need to be really super careful with it. And actually, probably my advice at this time is just to not use them. The reason for this is the luminance sliders are doing quite aggressive adjustments to footage. And as I'm about to explain in the rest of the video, your video clips are not raw stills. For example, if I just pause the clip here, you can see massive banding artifacts and this quite simply will ruin your footage. So I can't recommend using them. The hue and saturation though, really good. Something to really bear in mind when using these sliders is that 
video clips aren't raw stills. And even raw video doesn't really come close to the incredible dynamic range you get with raw stills. So you have to use these sliders with the delicacy that your footage demands, particularly if you're using 8-bit footage. Right, I'm going to show you how I would use these sliders to grade some footage. Let's do it. So in Final Cut now, and the footage I've got here is, it's a little bit of a treat. It's actually ProRes RAW, which I've converted to S-Log3 S Gamut 3 Cine. You can see down here, we've got our three groups of sliders and we've got the basic controls, the camera calibration and HSL. For this grade, all I'm gonna need is just the basic controls. And in my chain of plugins, you can see I've already loaded an instance of custom lookup table. I'm grading log footage, so it will need a lookup table. But as you can see, I've positioned my Lightroom sliders basic controls before my lookup table. This is definitely the right way around to have them. You've got way more control when you do it this way. My go-to lookup table, as always, is the Phantom Lutz Neutral. Whilst I like the colors instantly from this lookup table, with this shot, I want to accentuate the warmth. So instead I'm going to choose the tungsten variant. Okay, now it's time to seriously pump it up with these Lightroom sliders. First thing I want to do is sort out our exposure and contrast. It looks a little bright to me, so I'm going to dip the exposure a tiny bit and then add a touch of contrast. This is really good because you actually don't get a dedicated contrast control in the color wheels. I'm going to bring the highlights down because they're quite prominent in the background. This slider just works so well. Then I'm going to bring the shadows up just a little bit just to bring out some of the detail. I'm also going to bring the whites down a little bit just to kind of temper that background even more. And then I'm going to drop the blacks to give us a nice extra bit of contrast. It's looking a little bit flat, so I'm going to give it way more vibrance and just a touch of saturation. Next, I want to do something about the colour in this shot, because although it does look pretty chilly, I really want to accentuate the autumnal feel, bring out the oranges and reds. So the obvious thing to do is to just try pushing the colour temperature into tungsten a little more. And although this has worked, it's also looking a touch green to me, so I'm going to boost the tint towards magenta just a tiny bit to counteract that. So there we go, and the last thing I want to do is just add an instance of color wheels at the very end of our chain and this is a nice little trick something i do on most grades is i actually dial back the saturation of the highlights and then increase the saturation of the shadows this is something a friend showed me a long time ago and i kind of like what it does so there we go here you can see exactly what the lightroom slider is doing it's just a really lovely plugin to use really intuitive very authentic and just looks good. So here we have the admittedly lovely quality ProRes RAW file. And then here's our grade. I love the look of this. I just think the colors are so wonderful. It's a real treat to grade this. I just want to do one more quick one, and this is a bit more normal. This is S Cinetone, shot in 10-bit on the A7S III, and I just want to see if I can improve it. Yes, S Cinetone also needs grading. So I'm starting with the basic controls, and I'll go from there. It looks a tad bright, so I'm going to bring the exposure down just a little bit and increase the contrast. Have a little play around with the highlights. Obviously, bear in mind this is not a log curve, so we have to be a bit more delicate with our adjustments. I'm just playing around with the highlights and shadows to get the best out of our clip. Small tweaks to the whites and blacks, just a touch of vibrance to make it more vibrant looking. I'm pretty happy with this so far. I also want to have a little play with the color temperature because to me it looks a little warm and a bit green. So minute adjustments, making it slightly cooler, slightly more magenta. Lastly, I'm gonna add the HSL sliders. And I don't know why, but this green jumper is bugging me a bit. It's a bit dominant. So I'm gonna push it slightly more into the green because I know in real life it's a little bit more green than it looks on screen. And then I'm just going to duck the saturation of it a little bit just because the focus should be on our subject's face rather than her jumper. The last thing I want to check is the vector scopes. So I've added a shape mask and I'm just gonna drop it over her face. And as you can see, it's pretty close to that skin tone line. I think I'm gonna nudge it slightly more towards the tungsten and now I'd say we're in pretty good shape. So now switching the effects on and off, you can see the effect that these Lightroom sliders have had on the footage. In this case, it's just a matter of color correction and just making the image pop. A little bit of exposure adjustments here and there, some good color correction, a nice bit of contrast, and that's just what this image needed. One other thing to bear in mind is you're best off using the very latest version of Final Cut Pro to use this plugin. I actually had held on for quite a while to update to Big Sur and I've finally done it for this 
plugin. Eric, the creator of these plugins, states that they may be a little bit processor hungry. To be honest, I haven't noticed that in the slightest, and my machine is by no means, you know, uh, bang up to date and maxed out or anything like that. All of the technical information like that you can find on the product page. Right now I'm going to go through this plugin's pros and cons and I'm going to start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So into the pros and finally these exist. What a great thing, especially for hybrid shooters. They also work brilliantly, especially the highlight and shadow sliders. I actually prefer the way these work to the highlight and shadow controls in the colour wheels in Final Cut. I really appreciate the subtle feel to the sliders, it just means you can really dial in your settings. It's also inexpensive, I think, at €35 Euros at the time of filming, I'd say that's good value. There's also something satisfying about the money going to the single producer of this plugin rather than a big company. Eric has obviously worked really really hard to make these, and of course don't forget you get a little extra discount using my code. And on to the cons, and I'd love it if these had the same reset to zero feature as you get in Lightroom when you double click on the slider. It would just make this plugin feel even more faithful to its inspiration. Playing with the luminance sliders in the HSL group for me resulted in mega banding. My advice at this time is basically not to touch it. There's no clarity slider, and that's understandable. It's a really difficult thing to replicate, and there's no telling the havoc it could cause to footage anyway. Eric warns of it being processor hungry, although I didn't notice this at any time. Finally, to my opinion, and I'm really chuffed with these, I'm so happy that they now exist after kind of years of me wanting them to exist. They look fantastic, really convincing, they do a great job, I, I use them often more than once per grade in my chain of plugins. I'm not saying these will completely replace the Final Cut colour wheels because it's they do slightly different things, but honestly since I got them I've used them more than the colour wheels. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about these in the comment section below if you want to. I'm down there as much as I can be, and I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.